Okay, so uh, today I would like to talk to you about Quarto. And Quarto might be a name that you haven't heard before, which is why I made sure to write the new R markdown in the title to attract your attention. Quarto is not a very familiar name yet, but it certainly will become. The R Studio Inc., uh, so the R Studio company that recently uh, renamed itself Posit because they want to expand beyond just R. They, they are starting to develop tools that work well with Julia and Python as well. So they didn't want to have R in their, in their name. Uh, is behind Quarto. They will maintain R Markdown. Sorry, I keep pasting the link for latecomers. Um, our markdown will remain functional. They will ensure backward compatibility, but they will not um, add new features to it because now all new features are being added to Quarto. So if you uh, are familiar with our markdown and this is the tool you use and you like, you can keep on using our markdown. Uh, it won't break, although a transition to Quarto would be particularly uh, easy because it's extremely similar. And if you don't come from the R world, the advantage of Quarto is that it's a tool that works extremely well with Python and Julia. And if you are familiar with Jupyter Notebooks or if uh, you are looking for a new way to create some dynamic uh, publish, like research quality publishing documents, whether they're PDFs, websites, presentations, et cetera, that have some uh, embedded code and the result of those codes, if you wish, then Quarto is really a great tool to consider. So uh, if you want to uh, follow the slides with me, you can click on this little button and that will open the Reveal.js uh, presentation in your browser. And just for information, this entire website here uh, and this Reveal.js presentation, it's all created with Quarto. So that gives you an idea of the kind of things that Quarto is capable of. So I'll pass one last time the um, link of the um, uh, webinar in the chat, but then I'll let you do that, Alex, if uh, new people are uh, joining us. So uh, what is Quarto? So first of all, before we jump into Quarto, let's talk about markup languages, uh, markup, and then the uh, aptly named markdown, which is in fact a markup language. So markup languages are uh, ways to control the formatting of text documents. If you open um, a Word uh, document, this is not a text document. Word documents uh, have fancy formatting, but it's invisible. It's uh, a Word document is not a text document. It's uh, uh, an archive made of, of various files. So it's not something that you can put under version control. It's something that cannot be opened with any text editor. It's something that has a lot of hidden formatting. And while it is convenient, there are many, uh, many reasons that you might want to uh, only use text documents. They can be put under version control with Git. You can open them with any text editor. You can be sure that you will always be able to read the content, even if uh, the software it was created with disappears. Um, yeah, thanks, Alex. Right. But uh, text documents, if you want to be able to render them into some nice format, you need to embed in a raw form, in a text form, the formatting that is hidden in word processors, uh, for instance. And markup languages do exactly that. They are very powerful uh, ways to make very nicely formatted documents. And for instance, uh, HTML, the uh, way to, to write web pages, is one of those markup languages. Uh, there is another one that's called Tech that is used to create PDFs, and they are often used with the macro package LaTeX. And this is an example of a very, very basic document that just uh, has the, 
the name of the document, I mean, the, the title, the name of the author, the date, a first heading section, and some text in the first section. So that's written in LaTeX. And while the information is in there, my title is the title of the document, my name is the author name, uh, 24th 11 2022 is the date uh, first section is the name of the first section some text in the first section is the actual content of the first section it's in there it's uh, arguably this is not a very uh, friendly and easy to read document it's very cluttered visually with all of the markup similarly this is the exact same uh, document uh, this one is written in HTML, and the, the information is in there as well. Uh, my title, my name, the date here, the header, some text, but it's very clever. So the goal of Markdown, which is a markup language that was created in 2004, is to create a language that is, a markup language that is very uh, simple, that is easy to, to learn. And mostly that's not uh, all cluttered. And Markdown is, a, of course, a, a nice pun with a, it's kind of a dumbed down version of a mark, markup language. And it's become so popular that by now it's quasi ubiquitous. You see it on GitHub pages, you see it on countless forums. Uh, the number of sites that now accept one version of Markdown or another is huge and growing. Because of its simplicity, uh, and its power, it's been really uh, taken off everywhere. Now, it was initially created for web pages, and that's why you see it everywhere on the web. And what's nice also is that where it falls short, you can directly embed some raw HTML to uh, create something a little bit more fancy than Markdown with its very basic syntax cannot, uh, cannot do. But uh, beside, um, HTML, it's a bit limited due to its simplicity. Now, Pendoc, which is a free and open source markup format converter, so that's a, a tool that allows to convert from uh, pretty much any markup language to another markup language, has an extended uh, syntax for Markdown. And this syntax is really amazing uh, because it adds a ton of functionality to the basic markdown that was created in 2004, but it doesn't add any clutter. So it respects the philosophy of markdown that um, was really the, the goal of that markup language when it was created. And what's also amazing with Pendoc is that Pendoc is a tool that allows you to convert from any markup language or pretty much to any other one. Uh, Markdown allows you to render this extended Markdown syntax into, for instance, a PDF or um, an HTML site or a, um, a Word document or a book or pretty much anything. So Pendoc is fantastic to write a document in uh, a simple, easy readable uh, version of Markdown and uh, render it, transform it into something that looks nice and that you might want to use to publish your, um, uh, your document. And this is the exact same document I've showed in LaTeX and in HTML, but written in extended markdown syntax. So yes, there is still some metadata, like there is still some formatting, those little hyphens, uh, the headers in the front matter. This whole section here is called the front matter. Uh, the little uh, hashtag here that sets uh, this as being a header, but uh, this is definitely a lot easier to read and a lot less cluttered than um, the um, uh, HTML or LaTeX format. But beside the readability and uh, the fact that it's a lot easier to, to learn, a huge advantage is that if you've written a document in LaTeX, it's going to create a beautiful PDF, but it will only create a PDF. If you have written a beautiful web page in HTML, yes, it can be beautiful as HTML, but it can only uh, create um, uh, something that will be rendered uh, on the web. Well, this thing not only is a lot uh, easier to write and read, but it can then, by Markdown, be exported into both a PDF and a website and a book and a Word document and 
uh, all sorts of other things. So Pandoc is fantastic. Now, one limitation of Pandoc is that it's a static uh, text. It's it doesn't have anything to do with code. It's just um, some writing that is being formatted. But there is a concept that's called literate programming that was introduced in 1984. So it's certainly not a new concept um, that has this idea that it's great to develop a methodology that combine, combines snippets of code. So something that's written for the machine with uh, human languages. So something that's, that's written for people to read. And yes, when you are in a script, you can add some, uh, some information for humans and that will not be uh, taken into account by the program uh, by, with commented lines. But you wouldn't write your entire thesis or uh, a journal article or a blog post uh, using commented lines uh, in between the, the, the actual code. So uh, this idea of literate programming is to have something that's a lot superior to have um, uh, the non-code part of uh, some document that uh, will explain what's happening in the code or will uh, intertwine some writing and some, something that's rendered in code. But even though that's an old concept, it's not something that took off uh, that much because there just weren't many great tools. There was a great tool uh, in Emacs. Um, org is Emacs is a, is a fancy and very old text editor. And uh, one of the modes, which is one of the things you can do with Emacs, is called org. And org mode accepts org Babel that does exactly this. But there aren't very many Emacs users and out of those, very few got into our Babel. So it had a very tiny community. So it was very, very niche. But in recent times, thanks to our Markdown or uh, more recently Jupyter Notebooks, this concept has really taken hold. Nowadays, very many people actually do, without maybe uh, calling it that, literate programming with those tools. It's become very popular and very, uh, very common. So, Let's talk about Quarto now, because there was uh, our markdown, there were Jupyter notebooks. Quarto really um, is some kind of unifying um, uh, tool that allows you to uh, transform some text documents to uh, this, the, the output of, of your choice with some uh, dynamic code uh, in it. And if you use Python or Julia, it relies actually on uh, Jupyter to execute the code. And if you use R, it relies on it R, R, which is the, the package that is used when you use R markdown to execute the code. So they, they haven't invented any new thing. They have just um, package together existing tools in a way that's really great and convenient. Uh, Jupyter to execute the code uh, for Python and Julia, need R to execute the code with, with R. And then once the code is executed by these things, uh, you go from uh, the uh, Quarto Markdown document to a regular Markdown document in which the execution, the output of the code that has been executed is embedded in the Markdown uh, document. So after that, Pandoc can render the documents in the form format of your choice. So if you start in a text editor uh, by a .qmd file, that's a Quarto Markdown, you have the Jupyter or NITR engine, depending on your language, that executes the code, creates a Markdown file, and then Pandoc renders it in uh, anything you want. Now, for those who uh, like RStudio, you can directly run this uh, from within RStudio. And for those who like Jupyter Notebooks, you can uh, directly uh, execute, you're already in the second cell if you use Jupyter Notebooks, so you can directly uh, transform your Jupyter Notebook into the format of your choice, um, thanks to Quarto. So, 
you don't have to start with a, a text file. It's the most general option, but you can use in the ID uh, you're familiar with if uh, you'd rather. So now, for instance, if you use Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Jupyter could already be in, exported into Word documents, PDFs, and all that. So why would you possibly be interested in uh, writing uh, Quarto Markdown documents? So first of all, you can create books and entire websites with it. As I said, um, this entire website is created in Quarto. You uh, might have a hard time creating an entire website in a Jupyter notebook. But also, while Jupyter is neat, and it is indeed text, uh, it's not a binary file, it's, it's all text file, Jupyter has uh, a format that makes it not exactly friendly for version control. The Jupyter notebook um, has a lot of uh, um, unfriendly text in there that makes really uh, uh, like your, your git diff are going to be a bit hellish. Well, a QMD file, because the uh, markdown is so doesn't have all that clutter, uh, is, is a lot easier to, to work with. So for today, I will focus on starting with uh, very simple text documents, because that's the, the uh, workflow I prefer. I, I uh, don't personally use Jupyter Notebooks or RStudio, but also because it's the most general and uh, it's easiest to use version control. It's the one that uh, doesn't rely on any particular language or IDA or, or etc. Um, so the syntax highlighting, so the if you want your code blocks to show, so the, the actual uh, input code, uh, it can be in any language. Uh, and, and that's common in, uh, in most uh, sites, in most uh, website generators, in uh, a lot of places. So nothing very spectacular there, but any, any language can have syntax highlighting. Uh, if you want the code to be executed, uh, that can be only in Python or Julia, observable GS, it's a JavaScript thing, and also uh, Bash. So you, I, I should actually add it to the to the list. Uh, your um, uh, bash scripts uh, or bash uh, uh, lines can be also executed. And the output formats, well, that's all of the output formats uh, from uh, Pandoc, and that's really a, a huge list. Now let's talk a little bit about the document structure. I showed you this uh, minuscule snippet at the beginning, but uh, that was just for the Pandoc extended uh, syntax. So there is a front matter. It's written in the YAML format. Uh, for instance, uh, a very basic example, uh, between those triplets of hyphens, you have title, author, format. The minimum uh, uh, front matter doesn't even have the author, but you need the title and the format. The format is the uh, format in which, your, in which your document will be rendered. But you can make this a lot more sophisticated by setting all sorts of options for your documents. Any uh, option that is set in the front matter will apply to the entire document. Uh, for instance, if you want to execute uh, all of the code blocks, you can write this in the front matter. If you want uh, only some code blocks to um, uh, have a certain option activated in it, then instead of setting it in the front matter, you will set it in that particular code block. So after the front matter, well, there is of course some text in uh, Pandoc extended format, and then there are the code blocks. If you only want syntax highlighting, uh, if you're not intending on actually running the, the code and embedding the output in your document, you put your code between uh, triplets of backticks and next to the first backtick between curly braces, you write dot language. Now, if you want the code to be actually executed, and again, that will only work with Python, R, Julia, Observable GS, or Bash, you remove the little dot. And as I mentioned earlier, you can add uh, all sorts of options uh, for a particular code block uh, and it will be with the syntax. 
you can have very many lines of this, however many as you want, with uh, this little syntax of a hashtag and a vertical bar, and then uh, option column value. So people coming from our markdown, you'll see uh, that things are slightly different than what you're used to. In our markdown, these options were between the curly brace, uh, braces in the, um, in the opening uh, back ticks of the code block. And the reason this is a little different is so that uh, it can be universal and apply to Python and, um, and Julia. Uh, so if you want to transition from R Markdown to Quarto, the only things you will have to change is really uh, change your habits on how to uh, write the options for code blocks. That's uh, otherwise things are just uh, similar since it's uh, directly uh, flows from R Markdown. But it has a lot more functionality uh, from our markdown, and new functionality keeps being added constantly. Once you have your document, uh, if you want to render it, meaning execute the code and uh, then turn it into the output format of your, uh, of your choice, the uh, two commands that are uh, available are quarto render and then uh, the path of your file, and that will just render the document or quarto preview and then the file of your path. And this will uh, open automatically in your default browser uh, the preview of your document. And this live preview will allow you to see changes when you work on a document. So, excuse me, every single time you make a change and save the document, the live preview will get updated so that you can see live changes that you make to your document. And that's very convenient uh, so that you can have a direct feedback of how things look as you write in your document. Uh, so before I show you how this works, just a few notes on advantages. So the uh, site is incredibly well documented. Uh, some tools are fantastic. Uh, Pandoc is one of them, but the documentation is a bit austere. Or uh, Hugo, for instance, I love uh, Hugo websites, but the documentation I find is a, is a nightmare. Uh, this is uh, the uh, page of the Quarto documentation that allows you to quickly access any uh, section. And uh, in addition, and, and of course, the Quarto documentation website is also written in Quarto. Uh, you also have a great search button that allows you to uh, uh, instantly find information. So. Uh, Every functionality is documented and documented in a very nice, clear syntax. And uh, it's, uh, it's nice to have an, uh, a free and open source tool that has uh, such a well, uh, well done documentation. And the reason it's so well done, it's because yes, it's an open source tool, but uh, there is a company behind it. The company is POSIT. Uh, so the Quarto is free and open source, but uh, Posit makes money through uh, their RStudio server and some help with RStudio and other things. So uh, it's not uh, a tool uh, made by someone in their garage. There's um, a big solid team behind it. And it also relies on tools that have existed and uh, have been tested for a long time. So... Um, it's not gonna fall apart, uh, stop being maintained or disappear. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, using Pandoc, uh, Bootstrap, um, Jupyter, uh, R Markdown, so things that have been really well tested. If you want to develop websites, uh, I think they're fast uh, to, to, to build, easy, clean. They out of the box uh, work on, um, uh, screens of any size, well, thanks to Bootstrap 5. So that's convenient because nowadays, if you build a website that will look uh, clunky on the phone, it's not so good because people use phones or tablets a lot. You can customize your site uh, however much you want, thanks to CSS and SCSS. So if you're used to HTML, you can really play with it. But out of the box, it's pretty good. So if uh, you know nothing about CSS and HTML, you can do something that's that's pretty okay without uh, uh, having to uh, learn much at all. The code blocks have some nice little copy button. There's a great search functionality. Uh, your site can be hosted pretty much anywhere. 
And the fact that you can execute the, the code blocks if you want means that if you create a report, you can even hide the source code, but have the, the, the embedded results, which uh, is pretty neat. Uh, and you don't have, in order to do that, to have uh, your scripts, run your scripts, output the figure, then embed the figure in your document so that if you then make the change to your script at some point, you have to remember to update the figure or you have to create some crazy system with, um, uh, I don't know, some uh, make file or some whatever that's going to keep your thing updated. And you don't have to come up with all that. It's all embedded, all in there, simple. Uh, it also forces you to test your code. So you're not going to say something silly without actually testing it. And uh, people who read your site don't have to run the code to uh, see the, the result of the output, if that's what you want. Um, here, there are a number of uh, resources and links uh, that you can um, uh, follow later on uh, if you want, if you're interested in uh, uh, getting started with this tool. But now let's uh, let's do a little bit of live demo. With, uh, I'll, um, I'll show you a very simple example so that uh, you can uh, actually see it in action. So, um, um, so what's going on here? So I have my browser on the left because I will run the command quarto preview. So that will automatically open a preview of the render document in the browser. So you'll see the preview on the left here. Uh, over here, that's my text editor. And I only created a document uh, called test.qmd because uh, again, quarto documents are, have a .qmd extension. And there's nothing in that, uh, in that document yet. And below here, I have a, a terminal because since I'm not using Quarto from RStudio or uh, Jupyter Notebook, I will uh, run the preview from the command line. So if uh, you see what's going on in my uh, current directory, there is this uh, test.qmd uh, document that uh, I'm working on uh, in there. So the Minimum um, front matter, again, uh, it's the front matter is written in YAML uh, format. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, by the way, but I don't know how to say it. So you start with a triplet of hyphen, and you need the title of your document. So let's call it uh, uh, my first quarto document. You need to uh, have the title in quotes if it has some special characters, but if there's no special characters, you actually don't have to. And that's true for all of the, um, all of the, the info in the front matter. Uh, any special character needs to be escaped or uh, better uh, put it in double quotes, but uh, you don't have to if uh, uh, there's nothing that will uh, break the YAML uh, format. then you actually don't have to add the format here because when you run the quarto render or quarto preview command, you can actually add a flag to that command giving the output format. But you can also, um, uh, and that's what people commonly do, uh, have the format in uh, the document. So for the first example, let's uh, use HTML. So, okay, I have my font matter. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna start uh, rendering it. So if I type quarto preview, uh, because I am in the uh, directory in which there is my .qmd file, I don't need to add it uh, as an argument of the command, but if I were uh, running this from somewhere else, I would of course have to put the path of the uh, document I want to preview. So, uh, ah, okay, no, sorry. This only works for web for a website. My bad. Uh, since we're not uh, in a website or a book, so we're not in the portal project. I actually have to have the name of the file, even if I'm in the uh, uh, in the same directory. My bad. So, portal preview, and then my test uh, file. So I run this. And you can see that uh, Pandoc has uh, run the file, like you have a number of uh, things going on. 
And now I have um, this active session to um, finish it. I can just uh, uh, run Control C. And uh, here to the left, you can see my uh, live document. So the only thing that we have said is that it's an HTML. So uh, it's rend being rendered in the form of a website and the title, my first quarter document. So that has set the um, uh, name that you can see in the tab in your browser. And also it shows as the title of the HTML. Okay. Uh, so this is my first quarto website. So I'm, as I say this, I'm saving it now. You can see that things are happening in the, uh, I'm getting some feedback from the, um, the active uh, comment here. And you can see that uh, the new uh, line was added. Okay. So let's uh, make this a little bit uh, nicer. Let's add some, some stuff in the front matter. I can add uh, that I am the author. So uh, if I add author and then my name, and then as soon as I say, boom. OK, now I have the author. I can have also uh, institute. Uh, so I am at SFU. I say this. OK, affiliation, Simon Fraser University. Now. Uh, you see that uh, a number of things have been pre-coded in Quarto. Uh, for instance, uh, the institution is called affiliation and it's written uh, with this font in small caps, etc., etc. If you want to uh, personalize your things, you can, of course, customize all this. This is the default out of the box thing. And I think it's pretty good for most things. But if you're very picky about how things uh, look, you can um, stylize all of these things. Um, um, particularly for web website, this is where you might uh, might want to, to play with these things, maybe. Then let's add a date. So today is uh, April. 11, uh, 2023, okay. And maybe I want a, a different date format. So date format. Uh, so this by default is called um, long, but uh, I can have it uh, full that will add the uh, day of the week, or maybe I can have it in uh, ISO, so that will. Uh, so now, of course, you probably don't want to learn all of these things per heart. So how do you find all this information? Well, you can go to the Quarto documentation. And if you're wondering, OK, yeah, what's the how do I change the date format? Well, so you can, of course, uh, browse in there uh, if you want to uh, do something that's uh, that has a nice section. But if you uh, don't know where that date um, info is going to be, you can just type date, okay, quarto date and date formatting. Uh, uh, yeah, that looks like a pretty reasonable section. Okay, let's go in there. Okay, so date passing. So this is the input format. Quarto will be able to understand all of these formats. Uh, there's a number of keywords you can use. So you can just use today. That's what I could have done, actually. Uh, to show uh, today's date and uh, about the style. OK, so there's full, long, medium, short, etc. So as you can see, it's very nicely documented. So let's try uh, today. Instead of date, uh, I could have written today. And because today is April 11, 2023, that works also. OK, great. So now let's add some content, maybe. Um, so maybe I want to have this uh, in italic. So um, some, if you are familiar with Markdown, some of the uh, Markdown from the extended uh, Pandoc Markdown is uh, what you will be familiar with, but there's just some additional uh, stuff. So if I save this, now I have it in italic. Then I can have, um, uh, first section. Notice that 
instead of using a single hashtag, which would be uh, like a true header of first level, I, I put two of them here. And you can do either one, but uh, typically people use two hashtag for the, the higher um, header level. Uh, because when you create websites or books, it's nice to have a page as the actual first header in the in the tree. So it's a better habit, but uh, it's not a strict rule. Now notice how uh, when you hover over the your um, section header, there is a little um, anchor that shows up. This is actually I find very convenient because if you uh, click on the this little um, um, uh, anchor symbol. Now the uh, path of your uh, site is not just for that page, but for that particular section. So if you create uh, a website or a, a web page and you then want to reference a particular section or want to send a link to someone, or if I were to post in the chat, um, the link to a particular section, I, I would easily have access to the uh, uh, to to the the proper section in the document. So that's something that can also be customized, but by default, uh, those anchors is something that I find very convenient. Um, so here is more text uh, with some bold. So bold in Markdown is a, a double. Um, um, uh, double stars. Um, what else could we uh, add? I have a little cheat sheet because I don't have a lot of inspiration. Uh, some uh, strike through. Oh, I didn't. Uh, well. Yeah, maybe strike three is written this way. Um, some inline code. Okay, let's save that. Okay, so you can see we have bold strike through inline code. Um, in uh, classic Markdown, there is no no way to underline something. Uh, Markdown is very very simple the one that was uh, implemented in 2004. And so uh, bold and italic existed uh, from the get-go, but um, underline doesn't work. But um, uh, the Pandoc Markdown adds a lot of functionality, and uh, this is one of them. You can, uh, this text will be underlined. I am putting this under square brackets. And then between curly braces, I am uh, adding dot underline. So now I have something that is underlined, to be honest with that. So um, there's some added uh, markdown that didn't exist in the first version. Uh, something that existed from the web go, this is a, a quote. Okay. Okay, so classic markdown. Now, of course, uh, the reason we're using Quarto and not just Pandoc is because we want to be able to embed some uh, code blocks. So let's play, for instance, with R. So um, if I had um, uh, triplets of backticks and then between curly braces, some language here, for instance, R, I will have some code and it will be uh, rendered. So uh, for instance, um, let's see, I could create a little data frame. Okay, so this is some uh, R code and when I save it, so now you can see the execution took a teeny bit longer uh, because the uh, NITAR has to first uh, run the R code. And so we had uh, an output file uh, where, that was a markdown file and then turned into Pandoc. And uh, by the way, Quarto is very good at cleaning all those, those intermediary files uh, behind itself. So it's not going to leave 
all sorts of intermediate files unless you wished uh, you wish it to do so. And so uh, what we have here now is the um, code block uh, in uh, with syntax highlighting. So this is the, the a good R highlighting, but we also have the output. Note that as I hover over the uh, code block, there is a little uh, nice clipboard that allows me to copy the text. And it's all customizable. So if you don't like that, you can have it disappear. You can also have it uh, permanent rather than showing just when you hover. Um, everything is customizable, but the, the default are pretty reasonable. Now, if I uh, only wanted the syntax highlighting, and if I'm not at all running um, a document that in which I want any output, I could have put a little dot here. And, and then the, the code isn't rendered. I only have uh, the syntax highlighting. And this would work with any language, including uh, languages beyond R, Python, and Julia, because this is just about syntax highlighting. Now, maybe I want to uh, render the code because I will use uh, the code later on in the document, for instance, I could have, uh, uh, let's call it data. Uh, maybe this data frame, uh, I, I'm creating an object called data. I don't, uh, well, this wouldn't uh, render anything actually. Uh, so uh, this is uh, not a very good example, but um, maybe I want this code to run, but I don't want the output to be displayed. If I do, if I add the dot here, the code is not even run. If I remove the dot, it is run, but the output is displayed. Now, oops, oh, sorry about that. Uh, one way to have it run but not uh, displayed is to add uh, an option. So with this uh, syntax that I showed earlier, hashtag bar, and then you have uh, the uh, name of the uh, option and its argument. So echo false. So by default, the output is shown. So the uh, echo is true by default, but I can uh, write it as false. So uh, if I, oh, sorry, it's the uh, opposite. Ah, uh, <laughs> so echo is actually uh, does, doesn't show doesn't have to do with the uh, display of the output, but the display of the code block itself. Um, to hide the output, I'll have to look it up in the documentation. I don't remember how it is because I never use those options. Sorry. So here, the code is run, and what I have been hiding is not the output, as I said, but the actual uh, source code. So if you were creating a report. Uh, the readers might not be interested in the code, but it might be interested in the tables, in the figures, in the graphs rendered by the code. And so that's an option that you might want to use uh, there. Note that if you want to hide all of the code blocks, instead of having that uh, option in the code block, as I, I mentioned that earlier, you could add it directly in the front matter, and then that would apply for the entire document. Um, so um, to hide the output, uh, let's 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 uh, let's see if I can find it quick enough. Uh, output or hide output. Um, so this is what I've been doing, but. Maybe I want to actually hide the output. Uh, hmm. OK, I don't remember how to do that, but I've been uh, used. I, I have used it uh, before, so I know there is a way. I just don't remember it. Um, So by default, it shows uh, the code and the output. Uh, OK, so then I can add, of course, headers of different levels. So uh, the first section uh, was with two uh, hashtags. So with three hashtags, I have this is a sub, 
Beijing. Um, and um, uh, the default formatting is something that you can customize if you want to write some CSS file. You can uh, create a CSS document and then in the font matter, just uh, mention that the style is in um, uh, following your CSS and it's going to take your CSS into account in addition to the default uh, formatting. Um, we can create some plots. Uh, for instance, it's not going to be pretty because the plot, uh, the default plot uh, function for R doesn't create something very nice, but cars is um, a data set that R contains by default, so you don't need to uh, load anything to have access to that data. And plot is um, a function that is available by default, so uh, something a lot nicer would could be done with ggplot or other packages, but uh, this is to show you uh, how uh, a plot will uh, be displayed. And the automatically the sizing of the plot will uh, match the, the, the default will be pretty good. It's going to match your website or your PDF or whatever you want pretty well. But if you wanted to uh, shrink it or change the resolution, of course, you could add all this in. Um, in the uh, options. And again, uh, if you add echo pulse, uh, we can uh, hide the, uh, the code block. Um, and that might be uh, one that uh, might be nice to, um, uh, to just show plot. Because it is markdown, even if it's an extended markdown version, you can use some raw HTML. Uh, for instance, if you want to add uh, an extra uh, line because you think that uh, this graph just before, below the header is a bit squished, you can add the BR tag, which is raw HTML, and uh, that will add a blank line. So for those who know HTML, you can throw in some HTML in there. But because the extended markdown is pretty powerful, um, it's very seldom that I have to do that anymore um, now. Uh, okay, so now we have a very basic document. Uh, well, maybe let's add uh, one last thing. Some um, I have uh, some um, an, an equation. Let's add an equation just so you can see the the rendering of an equation. So this is uh, MathJax, which is the default um, uh, way to render uh, an equation with uh, LaTeX formatting in HTML, you can use something else if you uh, prefer. You can customize that, but, but uh, by default, uh, MathJax works out of the box. So you can have uh, um, uh, nice equations rendered. Okay, so we have this HTML. Now, what if we want to create a presentation uh, to, uh, like a Reveal GS presentation to show this in a talk? So what we can do is to go back to our terminal, stop the uh, preview, so that uh, automatically kill the, the preview, and go to the uh, front matter. And instead of uh, HTML as the format, write reveal GS. I save, and now if I uh, start a new preview. I now have the, the new preview that just popped open here. Uh, uh, I actually don't know. I have never tested it. That's a good question, and I don't know. Uh, you absolutely could if you added an A frame uh, inside your HTML, but without doing that, I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, you might have to embed uh, in your HTML some A frame um, um, 
uh, uh, section. But yeah, no, that's a, a good question. And I don't know, actually, Let, let's check it out. I'm curious. Um, interactive plots. So you can create, ah, Plotly, right. Because you can create some shiny apps and stuff like that, but what about Plotly? Mm. Yeah, it looks like it is working because uh, their website is creating in Quarto and uh, they are showing an example of Plotly here uh, using um, uh, Python. And um, yeah, it does it does work. So the answer is yes. I had never tested it, but yeah, good question. Thank you. So yes, it does support uh, Plotly. It it supports a lot of uh, JavaScript, so it's actually not that surprising. Uh, oh yeah, and you can see the the uh, all of the uh, yeah yeah no totally it has full support yeah. It's good with JavaScript and Plotly is based on JavaScript, so that uh, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, not good to test it out. Yeah. So um, I haven't edited any of my document, uh, but now I have it as uh, a presentation. So for those who are not familiar with Reveal JS, it's a, a, a way to present slides. Uh, in HTML based on um, uh, JavaScript as well. And to navigate your presentation, you can use the right and left arrow. I should have mentioned that actually, since uh, the, the presentation I gave at the beginning of this talk was in uh, Reveal.js as well. And so you can see the title, et cetera. And so if I uh, go to uh, my various slides, uh, so out of the box, it's not necessarily very nice. Why is it not very nice? Well, because for Reveal.js, if you want to create one big um, uh, title slide that only has a title, you use a header of level one. To start a new slide, it's a header of level two. And anything else will be in the same uh, section. So if I wanted to have uh, my uh, equation in a new slide, I would have to uh, change the level, and then that would create it in the next slide. Or if I really wanted to have it as uh, a subheader, I would have to add uh, three little hyphens, which mark um, the uh, the start of a new slide. So that's a way to keep uh, the subheading level while breaking things into um, different slides. Uh, if I wanted to have uh, the first section as, or if I wanted to add uh, a, big, uh, um, a big title that's a full slide, then I had a, a header of level one and that uh, add it as a big single uh, header. So we uh, only have five minutes to go. So maybe I should uh, open the floor for questions. So I have demoed very few things, um, but there is a, a very well documented uh, uh, website for Quarto. I also put a number of links in one of the slides. And um, I can also pass in the chat. Sorry. Uh, well, actually, I can show it to you here. Um, on that uh, website, there is um, a workshop. I'll pass the link. So the, the content. Um, is uh, pretty much the same, but at the bottom, I am showing uh, a lot of examples. Uh, so very simple examples, but you uh, can explore that if you want. And um, I added the, the raw code, and then you can see the, the result. So there's a little example of a reveal GS, of some PDF, uh, of some uh, uh, HTML. So that's uh, can give you um, 
some uh, little uh, very simple uh, snippet examples that you can explore, but uh, mostly the uh, documenta documentation site uh, and the um, guide uh, page is what I uh, find the most useful. So I'm passing that in the chat. Uh, 